want to triple your enrollments in your martial arts school in the next 90 days. If that's the case, I want you to listen up because I'm going to be laying out the six steps that you're going to need to put in place to literally go from enrolling five students a month to 15 or to go from enrolling 10 students a month to 30 or to go from 20 to enrolling 60 a month. I want to show you the key steps that we've discovered inside of our own school, and I'll be sharing that with you. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Jennifer Waters. I'm the founder of Seven Figure Dojo, but I actually started out just like many of you watching this video. I started training when I was very young. My dad started the school in the early 80s, and as I was growing up, the school just wasn't doing the best. Now, don't get me wrong. We were crushing it when it came to producing high quality black belts. We were killing it when it came to competitions, but the actual school itself struggled to go between 40 to 80. I think I think one time we even had 100 students. Fast forward to when I was 18, I graduated high school, and at that point in time, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and go all in on building out a martial arts business with my family. We invested into mentorship, marketing systems, I came back and started creating what's now known as the Seven Figure Dojo Method, and then we exploded our school. We went from making just a few thousand dollars a month to making over a million dollars a year in about four and a half to five years. Fast forward again, 14 years from that first time we ever crossed the million dollar threshold and we've still been making multiple seven figures with our flagship school and now we help schools all around the globe turn their passion into profit so let's dive into the six steps and what you need to do in order to actually grow your school and to triple your enrollments so step number one, you need to set goals. Okay, I, I know you've heard this a lot before and, and I know you might be thinking, well, goal setting is great for people that actually are hitting their goals regularly, but it's not for someone like me. And I used to be that person too. But the thing is, is that everything you do needs to be measured and you need to do it every time, okay? So if you really are wanting to go to triple your enrollments, if you're enrolling five students a month right now, what would have to be true for you to start enrolling 15 students a month? Well, the very first thing is you've gotta keep track of your stats, your conversion rates. How many leads are you getting in? How many people are coming in through your doors? They're actually showing up for the lesson. Those are two different things. Leads are people who raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested. I wanna know more about what you do. An appointment that shows is going to be someone who actually walks through your door. So you got to track those stats. And then the next thing that you also have to do is not only track those stats, but you need to determine, you actually have to look in what's your conversion percentage on those. The people who walk in the door, how many of them are saying yes and signing up? Now, typically, whenever I work with a client, Normally what we see is we see that they have a pretty high conversion percentage in their mind. And maybe this is you, you might say I might convert like 80 to 90%. If they come in the door, I'm going to sign them up. And the reality is you're of course going to sign them up. If someone has walked in the door because they saw your sign or they were referred by another student and they actually looked you up, maybe they Googled you, found your website. They are what we would call a very high intent student or a high intent customer. They have a high intention of starting, not just with anybody, but with you. You lit They literally would have had to have had a negative experience for them not to sign up, or they literally had to have come, come in with delusions in their mind that it's not going to cost them the general amount that they would anticipate for martial arts classes. Meaning they think it's going to cost $50, you're charging $150, and you haven't broken through to break down the price to be able to have it so that they can afford classes. Whatever that is that you have going on with organic traffic or referrals, you're going to sign the majority of them up. But once you start adding in some of these other sources of marketing that I'm going to talk about, this is when people start blaming the lead quality for their lack of ability to sign people up. And I'll just let you know, spoiler alert, I don't believe in lead quality. And I'll tell you why here in just a couple of minutes and probably why I stand out uh, among pretty much anybody else that's talking about this in the martial arts industry. So you are going to sign the majority of those people up, but keep track of the stats anyway, because you need to be able to measure it. You've got to have a benchmark for when you start implementing these other five steps that are remaining. So let's go move on. And we're going to go to step number two, which is you have to turn on paid ads. Okay. Now 
I wanna talk about this for a little bit because I've seen a lot of people do paid advertising and they say that they're doing paid advertising, but what they're really doing is just boosting posts. And boosting posts is not what I'm talking about. If you're boosting posts, you might as well be taking 50 to $100 and literally going to your toilet, throwing that dollar bill in and flushing it because that is what you're doing. You are wasting your money. And also if you're only spending $100 a month, $200 a month, $300 a month, you might as well be taking that and also flushing it down the toilet. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because the minimum threshold for you to play this game with online paid advertising is about $1,000 a month that you're going to need to put towards Facebook and Instagram in order to actually generate you enough leads that will then convert into students. If you're just putting in a couple of hundred dollars a month, you're going to get some leads, but you're not going to get enough to convert into students. And why is that? Because colder traffic, which are going to be people that have never heard about you before, they've never even thought about doing martial arts before, are going to be harder to convert. It is going to take more contact with them. It's going to take more nurture with them and it's going to take a really great sales process in order to convert them. At this point, there's going to be people that are watching this video right now that are going to go, "Ah, I just want an easier way. No, you don't want an easier way. Well, maybe you do, but what you truly want is you want an effective way. And I'm just telling you from my experience of running a seven figure dojo for the last 14 years and counting, trying to make it so that you can, you know, squeeze the the most out of $200 or $300 of spend, you could by far get way more return on your investment by just going ahead and committing to $1,000 a month. And if you do not have that $1,000 a month, make sure you click in the description because we have a lot of videos here on this channel about ways that you can generate leads absolutely for free without doing paid advertising. But if you are wanting to triple your enrollments, you need to understand you can't just rely on all the steps for free advertising because it's not going to triple. Now, It may help you get an extra five students a month or an extra four students, whatever, but it's not gonna triple your enrollments. This strategy will. So get on to paid advertising. And when you do paid advertising, you need to realize that you've got to have about seven to 10 different types of creatives that you're running at one time in order to do what's called split testing. So we wanna be able to take those ads and we wanna test them against each other. And we wanna find out which ads are performing and which ones are not. We wanna turn off the ads that are not performing performing and want to keep the ads on that are performing. Now, if you're doing this right, you should be doing this anywhere from two to three times per week that you're going in and you're split testing. That means also in order to keep up with seven to 10 different creatives, you have to create new creatives every 48, 72 hours. So you're going to need to be creating graphics. You're going to need to be updating your ads and you're going to need to be making sure you are tracking what's actually happening. How many leads are you generating? What's your cost per lead? Um, And making sure that that you are really focused on generating the best possible amount of leads for the amount of money that you are spending. Now, for some people, a lot of people, doing all that plus running your martial arts school day to day seems like a lot. And I would tell you, yes, it is. It is absolutely a lot. And that is why a ton of people turn to Seven Figure Dojo in order for us to take that part off your shoulders and to do that part for you. We have data points across hundreds, literally hundreds of accounts. We're not a small, uh, just startup martial arts marketing agency. We have been in this industry ourselves for years and we've been working with clients around the globe since 2020. So we've got a lot of experience under our belt and we know what actually crushes it and what does best. So with that being said, if you're finding like that to be overwhelming, definitely make sure you go and you click the link in the description and we'll go ahead and have a conversation with you about what's going on inside your business. Now for the next step, step number three, in order to triple your enrollments, you got to get serious about running internal events that bring in guests. Okay, you've gotta get serious about this. If you're doing this maybe once every three months, once every six months, it's not enough. One time a month, you should be bringing people into your school. You should be getting all of your current students to bring their friends with them. Now, in order to do this, in order to get leads this way, you've gotta promote crazy, over-the-top events that appeal to most people. So try not to go sub-niche. You know, try not to go so deep into the weeds that no one's gonna know exactly what this thing is about. Keep it very generic, but keep it fun. Keep it interesting. Make it beginner friendly. You don't wanna do 
do an advanced seminar and say, oh yeah, by the way, you can bring your friend with you. That's not gonna work. And if it does work, you bring people in, they're not gonna, they're not gonna enjoy their experience. You want the experience to be beginner friendly. And the mistake that I see a lot of people making is they'll have events, but they think that they need to continuously serve their current students by making the event more something that their current student would enjoy and could grow in, making it more advanced, something that the current student has never seen. That stuff should be put into your paid events that your current students come to, but your free stuff should be beginner friendly. And the reason why your students are coming is because they like the community. They enjoy the community experience. And they have friends that they want to bring with them. If your school is really top heavy right now and you have a lot of advanced students and you don't have a lot of beginners, you're not going to have a lot of people showing up to these free events, which is why I didn't put this step before the paid advertising. You really need the paid advertising so you can start generating those new students who are going to bring energy to your school. And then immediately you need to start having internal events so so that they can bring their friends and you'll be able to get some referrals. Number four, the fourth step that you need to do is you have to get outside of your four walls of your school. If you were spending all your days inside of your school, you're not actually getting out into the community, you're not talking to people in the community, and you're not getting leads from the actual in-person physical community around you, you are missing out. If you want to triple your enrollments in the next 90 days, you got to get out. You got to make a commitment to get outside of your four walls. Well, there's too much to do. I have to revise my curriculum. I need to clean the mats. I need to do whatever it is. I would challenge you that right now you are wasting time. You are doing things that could be done on a different day. You are literally choosing to not grow your business by how you're spending your time. If you cannot get outside of your four walls for at least an hour a day, then you're going to have to pay someone who can in order for this strategy to work. Somebody who can actually reach out and can get inside of the community events that are around your area. Now, the other way that I've also seen people try to do this is they go, well, I'll just post organically. I'll post on Facebook. I'll post on Instagram. I'll try to get those things to go viral. I'll post on TikTok, all of these things. Literally, that is not what I want you to do. And let me tell you why. When you're posting on Facebook and you're posting on Instagram, you have to realize that Facebook and Instagram, well, first of all, Facebook's gonna show it to people that have interacted usually in some form or fashion with your channel or with your Facebook page before. Now, the thing about it is that back in the day, Facebook pages used to get organic reach, meaning the page itself was shown organically. You literally would be scrolling through your feed and all of a sudden you would see someone else's page. I want you to think back, when is the last time you actually saw someone's page pop up on your feed? You only saw it when it was being advertised. That's because there are so many Facebook pages that Facebook can no longer organically push it into the feed. So all those things that you're doing, posting on your Facebook page, that's great for nurturing leads. People who've already expressed an interest and they're trying to dig in and figure out what you're all about. That's what those posts should be about. You should be posting videos of your classes. You should be posting tips. But on Facebook, that's what you should be doing. On Instagram, if you're posting reels on Instagram, which I highly recommend, you need to understand, again, this is more about lead nurture. This is people going, okay, let me check this thing out. Let me see if it's legit. That's what that's going to be about. Unless you break out and you go viral. And if you go viral, you're going to a national or international audience. These are people that have never you know, seeing you and they're probably not even able to come into the class. It's great for authority and brand the same way that doing YouTube videos are great for authority and brand and are more of an advanced strategy. But these are things that you should be doing when you're making half a million dollars a year or you're at the million dollar mark and you really want to squeeze more out of your local area or you have intentions of multiple locations or franchising or whatever it is that you're doing. So in order for you to grow your business right now in your local area, the thing that you need to do is you need to get outside the four walls. You need to go to community events. You need to collect leads at those events. That's just one of the ways. And there's multiple other ways that we teach our clients, but you got to get going. You got to get these things moving. All right, so step number five, let's move on to that. Practice sales. Listen, remember what I told you earlier? You've been so stuck in reaching organic referrals, you know, people that already know about you, that when you actually get someone who's never heard of you, you go, ah, oh, the lead quality is bad. These, these leads 
from Facebook and Instagram, they're awful. They, they're not ready to sign up. Of course they're not. They literally weren't even thinking about martial arts two seconds before your ad showed up. Your ad interrupted their day. Your ad literally had this person go, huh, maybe martial arts is a good idea. And they raised their hand by putting in their information and said, yeah, maybe I wanna try it out. So think about it from someone who's saying, heck yes, let's start martial arts to maybe I wanna try it out. That's what Facebook and Instagram lead, uh, ads are, right? Those leads that come from Facebook and Instagram are literally saying, maybe I want to try it out. Whereas your leads that are coming from your website or your walk-ins or referrals are saying, heck yeah, I want to do martial arts. Your ability to take someone from, I've never heard about you to I am enrolled is the defining factor on you being successful. And if you can't do that right now, If you don't know how to do that right now, you must learn that skill. You know, I remember a time where I had a fight uh, coming up. I was transitioning out of kickboxing and I was moving into MMA. And when I went into the fight, I had a lot of background doing kickboxing. I grew up doing kickboxing, Kenpo Karate, and I had grown up doing jujitsu and grappling. So um, I had already, you know, earned my purple belt in Brazilian jujitsu at that time. So I was very familiar with both the top and the bottom. And I competed in both realms, kickboxing and jujitsu jiu-jitsu tournaments, so I'd done both. But the middle, the wrestling, was the part that I didn't have a great grasp of. Now, don't get me wrong, the gi, the judo throws, you know, the double legs, those types of things. From the jiu-jitsu perspective, I was great on, but not the wrestling. And I went into that MMA fight, and ultimately, I got taken down way more times than I wanted to get taken down because I was not prepared. I ended up losing that fight, and I lost that fight in front of my hometown. And it really motivated me because I thought to myself, well, I never want to be put in this position again. And so immediately I went back as soon as I could start training again and I started training wrestling. Everything about wrestling. I learned from a collegiate wrestling coach. I made sure that I adapted to it, but I had to get humble enough to go, I don't know what I don't know. So I'm going to learn everything about it and I'm going to become an expert in doing this. So many times as martial artists, we're willing to do that, but we're not willing to do that with business. We're not willing to go, I don't know as much as I should know about sales. And sales is the life blood of your school. If you are not good at sales, your school is going to die. So you have got to get good at sales. You've got to get good at taking people from complete stranger to completely enrolled. And you've got to be able to have that adaptability just like I did so that I could go back into the MMA match and I could go crush it because I knew what to do when it came to wrestling. All right. So this is going to be step number five. And if you're not practicing sales on a regular basis, start. And when I say practice, do you have a script? Are you reading through it? Are you practicing with a camera or in front of the mirror? Are you able to overcome objections? If you're not able to do those things, you must practice sales more. You have to do it more frequently, multiple times a week, if not daily. These are the steps that I put in place. These are the steps that my most successful clients have put in place for themselves and then eventually for their team. Okay, so number six, and you did a great job hanging around to the end of this video. By the way, if you are seeking more information just like this, then I would highly recommend that you go to 7FD Facebook com and join our free Facebook group for school and academy owners. We have a ton of material inside there that is going to help you excel your school. So 7fdfacebook.com. Make sure you go there after you finish watching this. So number six, the sixth thing that you need to do in order to really expand and to triple your enrollments. You're going to want to take all five of these steps that I mentioned earlier, and you're going to want to create a game plan over the next 90 days to execute it, not just once, but twice and three times. So if you want to be able to do this, you have to have an internal event every month for the next three months. You have to have a paid advertising campaign and strategy every month for the next three months. You've got to get outside your four walls. You've got to practice sales. You've got to do all those things. You've got to set goals and you've got to do that on repeat for the next uh, three months in a row. Rinse and repeat that and you are going to be able to crush it. You're going to be able to triple your enrollments in the next 90 days. Until the next time, guys, keep being awesome.